you never can change the order of your genes, the coding. You can't, you can't change the coding, but you can change the expression of the gene because of the nutrients that you can intake. Hey friends, Dr. Motley here, and today I'm going to talk to you about your gut, your genes, and your detoxification pathways. And the reason I wanted to talk to you about this today is because you hear a lot of talk about proper detoxification. Everybody wants to detoxify, to get rid of things, lose weight, increase their metabolism. And at times, some individuals will detoxify better than others. Why is that? I wanted to talk to you about why you may not be detoxifying as efficiently as possible. And we're gonna to talk to you about how you can actually take gene reports, find out how you can detoxify properly, and what are the top eight nutrients that can actually help your genes process toxins, rebuild, recycle, and help you give you more energy. So I just wanna say thank you again to Dr. Josh Axe for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about your health. So guys, I wanna start off with this podcast talking about two major important roles when we're talking about detoxification. It's a big byword out there, but I want you to know that you're unique. You detoxify differently than another individual based upon your genetic coding. Yes, there are many things that can actually detoxify the general audience. There are many foods, there are many products, there are many nutrients that can help you detoxify. But if you find yourself in a stalemate, if you find yourself one of those individuals who cannot take a step forward, then I want to give you some recommendations, some education about what you could do to help you push past that hump. So there are two major things that we're going to discuss when we're talking about proper detoxification and genetic information. It's creating energy and detoxifying gently and safely by helping your liver cleanse properly. So we're going to talk about the energy and the liver. So when we get into detoxification, what are we detoxifying from? As a preface, guys, if you're like me, I look back at my history of how I ate. So I'm talking about I ate too much sugar, I ate star crunches, I ate fudge rounds, I drank Mountain Dew. I used to take and steal Coca-Cola bottles, the one liters, and I would go into another room and chug that, and I would drink probably half to the whole thing. Now, I just can't believe I did that. I lived through that. When we, in this culture today, talk about doing a detox, it's because we all realize that there are certain things we've probably eaten too much of. Too much sugar, too many carbs, too many bad fats or trans fats, processed foods. So we're all working towards a goal, right guys? To get these things out of our bodies and out of our tissue. And if we look at the research, we are finding that these types of things can stick in our body and stay there for a very long time. They can stay in the liver for a very long time. Have you ever noticed that people that have metabolic syndrome or pre-diabetic literally can expand or have more weight put on in the front of the body and they can expand out from the, di from the gut is because you can have old sugars, old carbs, old fats, all congealed within layers under the skin. We all want to break past that hump. We all want to detoxify properly. So you see it in our culture today. You see that we actually have so much toxicity that we are striving for and thirsting for ways to detoxify, but there's so much information out there. Who is there to believe? What is there out there that I can do for me particularly? Well, I want to start off with talking about your sugar intake. One of the simple things that Dr. Josh Axe and I talk about is reducing sugars and carbs. So if I am with a patient, I always ask them, what is their diet? What are they intaking? What are they eating? And if I ever find out that they have too much carbs, too much starches, too many bad proteins, or too many bad fats, I start them off usually by getting rid of a few things. But they're all related to what? Sugars. Remember, we're trying to go to the body to get it to create energy and to help the liver detoxify. And one of the best ways to do it is to reduce your heavy sugar load which is why such diets out there like the FODMAP or the AID diet, the anti-inflammatory diet, the paleo, the keto, all want to reduce sugars, simple carbs, and give your body the ability to do what? Start to use fats as a fuel source. Now, when we have any of excess sugars coming to the body, it actually builds up toxicities because this is a mechanism. And you guys probably already know this, but I want to go over it with you to give you a simplistic way to view it. 
When we have any form or any type of sugar that's in high amount going into our digestive system, they show in reports, and I see it in the office every day, where high sugars can actually inflame the lining of your digestive system. When your digestive system lining gets inflamed, it can actually damage the hydrochloric pumps in the stomach. It can actually damage the lining and the pores that help nutrients pass in the small intestine out into the bloodstream. These are just a few of the things that can happen when you have high amounts of sugar. So you have high amounts of sugar creating inflammation in the lining, damaging the lining, and the neutrophils, the natural white blood cells within the lining of your digestive system are there to help you what? Fight off the inflammation or heal up the lining. You're trying to repair the damaged lining. So a couple things can happen. You can have zonulin, which is a hormone that builds up in the, in the body, in the digestive system that opens up the cracks or the pores that allow the nutrients to flow into the bloodstream, but it opens them up too wide. So then if you eat food later and you don't fully digest the food, that food goes into the digestive system and can go into the cracks, the enlarged pores, and actually get to the bloodstream. And that can cause an immune attack, an invasion of the immune cells to help take this undigested food particle and get rid of it because the body sees it as a foreign object or an enemy. And then inflammation can occur everywhere in the body because the food particles can flow everywhere through the body in the bloodstream. That's the version of leaky gut. That's how high sugar toxicity can affect you. Furthermore, guys, when that sugar gets in high amounts in the blood, if you're eating too much sugar, your body will try its best to absorb the sugar into the cells by releasing insulin. Not only can it affect cortisol levels, but it's your body's pumping out insulin to pull this sugar inside the cell. And if the cell has too much sugar, it will do what? It gets resistant to the insulin and says, I don't want any more, any more sugar. So the sugar is free floating. The body will take that and take excess sugars and then convert it into triglycerides. It can actually make lactic acid as well. But the triglycerides will then go into the refrigerator, it'll be stuffed into the liver, and the liver starts to get filled up with triglycerides, and then it pushes it back out into the bloodstream saying, I can't have any more triglycerides. And then you get a blood report back saying, hey, I have high triglycerides. And these types of fats can change your cholesterol levels. And then you start seeing individuals with, what? Metabolism issues, metabolic syndrome, fatty metabolism, fatty liver, pre-diabetic, insulin insufficiencies or insulin problems. You see how it all works? All because high sugar buildup where the body couldn't absorb what? The sugars. Now that's also a mechanism of your genetic coding. So I'm saying this, when things build up in the body, they can spill off into the liver, they can go into the muscle tissue, they can actually get into the joints. That's why people get arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. It can actually go into many tissues of the body. I'm not just saying sugar. I'm talking about anything that comes in through our food sources, such as heavy metals, like aluminum, mercury, nickel, that are in our food sources, guys. We're talking about pesticides. It's on most GMO types of crops. And we're talking about small food preservatives and additives that they add. Corn starch, corn flour, high fructose corn syrup. Those are man-made, and your body may see them as a foreign object. If they go through a leaky gut, if they get into your bloodstream, your body will inflame, get puffy, and your body has to try to cool it down. And in Chinese medicine, they tell us that what? your body will do everything it can to create the balance, the yin and the yang. And what it'll do is you'll get water retention, you get bloating, your body's trying to cool down from an inflamed state. But what brings the inflamed state? That's the question. We're talking about how does your body break down the toxins? You are unique. Remember, your body will take a gene and your gene is basically a code. And that code is like a computer code. You know about a computer programmer who does coding to run a certain app or create an app, a function, a metabolic function. So your body has a genetic code that actually is coding to produce a protein or an enzyme. And these enzymes run all the processes in your body. So, you know, people talk about food enzymes that break down certain types of food. Well, enzymes help break down things or speed up processes. That's what an enzyme does. It helps you metabolize certain vitamins and minerals faster so that it can run all the functions in your body. So you have your genetic coding producing enzymes to run all your functions. And one of the major functions that you will have is going to be what? Is going to be detoxification. So in my office, if I find a person who can't get past the hump, who can't get that last five pounds off, 
who can't get rid of that excess metal toxicity they keep finding on their hair report or their blood report, or they can't get rid of what? Strep or staph or yeast or candida or even Lyme disease. You can look into your genes to find out. So remember, the first steps we're talking about is to create energy and to what? Get the liver to work properly. When we want to create energy, guys, when we talk about eight simple nutrients that's going to help you to find the pathways to increase energy and detoxify, you're going to understand this a little more clear. Your body has certain little factories within your cells called mitochondria. And those mitochondria need certain types of fuel to help run the process within the mitochondria known as a Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle pumps out a molecule known as ATP. Now guys, don't be overloaded. ATP is just an energy molecule that helps with every single function in your body. So your mitochondria are power plant factories within your cells pumping out ATP to run and give you energy. If you find yourself in the day getting too tired in the afternoon, you go, man, I keep hitting a wall. Well, in Chinese medicine, you could have certain organ imbalances, but overall, with energy production, you may not just be producing enough energy. And those are run by certain nutrients and certain vitamins that you should be getting through your food and diet. But if you have high toxicity load, your body may be what? In, just not nourished. Inefficient nutrients because you're too toxic. So when I tell my patients to increase energy, we find nutrients that help them increase function within the Krebs cycle the mitochondria. And you'll find out that a good multivitamin is one of the best ways to start. Now, I can talk about certain types of products that I use, but I, if you guys have any deeper questions, you can message me at drdrmotley.com, send us some messages. I'll try to put out more information to you if you need it. But I want you to know that certain vitamins and minerals help this Krebs cycle. For instance, magnesium, zinc, manganese, B1, B1 is thiamine, B2, which is riboflavin, B6, which is called P5P, or a broken down version of B6. These are all minerals and vitamins that help run the Krebs cycle. If you don't have a sufficient amount of these in your daily diet, you may not be able to run that Krebs cycle efficiently if your genetics are not prone to have an efficient Krebs cycle. Does that make sense? Why is it that you stopped burning fat or stopped detoxifying, but your friend keeps going? because their genes could have coded efficiently, had really good dominant genes to keep running that cycle efficiently. But your parents may have passed on to you defective genes. They're called variants, variations within your gene coding. And if they pass it on to you, you may not be able to do what? Produce energy efficiently. So you may need more nutrients like the magnesium or the zinc or the B6 or B1, B2. You're the person who may need that to run this cycle efficiently. Do you see how it all works? So at times patients come in and they may, one patient may need a lot of B1 or B6. The next person doesn't. It's because their genes coded for it. So I want you to be encouraged. Don't be discouraged. We're going to talk about genes and how you can test for them to help you get over that hump. So the Krebs cycle, guys, is there to help you produce energy. And you'll find out when you get a gene report, I'll talk about this, but I want to go ahead and tell you about it. If you ever get a gene report, there's two good genes that you can check out, the ACAT and the NDUFS, NDFUS, NDUFUS. I just think I spelled that backwards, NDUFS. And it sounds funny, but there are certain genes that help you take certain types of nutrients, such as good carbohydrates and good fats, and put them into that Krebs cycle, along with the vitamins and minerals to help run the cycle. If the gene the endufus or the ACAT, if these aren't working properly to help regulate cholesterol levels and sugar levels, these genes are what, this is what they do. If they can't feed the Krebs cycle properly, you will have to bump up the nutrients because those nutrients take the place of what the defective gene cannot do. So you're taking the nutrients because the genes are not working at 100%. In fact, if a parent passed on to you one dominant gene of energy production, and one recessive gene of energy production, that gene's only working 50% of the time. Which means as you get older and you encounter everyday stress, everyday problems, your body gets to a point where it goes, I have worn my gene out. I don't have the capacity to keep creating uh, energy efficiently. And if you don't take the nutrients, you'll go downhill from there. 
That's why people say, hey, I felt really good till I was 30 or 33, and all of a sudden I feel like horrible. I feel like crap. It's because you didn't feed your body the nutrients. That's why eating a good diet, staying clean, drinking plenty of water, the things that Dr. Axe talks about all the time, why is it so important? Because you gotta keep those nutrient levels up. You gotta keep your Krebs cycle creating energy. Now, all that to say, guys, when this Krebs cycle is turning, it's helping 70%. If you get the Krebs cycle working efficiently, you'll take 70% of your problems and get rid of them. I've seen it in the office. The Krebs cycle is so basically contributing to all the other cycles in your body, all the cellular cycles to help you detoxify, repair, recycle, rebuild. And so you'll see really good reports, really good books out there, guys. I know you've seen them about dirty genes, about gene reports, about methylation. Dr. Amy Yaskow, she has really good reports out there about how to um, help your genes. Dr. Jay Dunn, these are good docs to follow or to read about, about how to help your genes, help heal your genes. Because what they say in gene report, when you're talking about creating energy, and then we're going to talk about the liver, is that you never can change the order of your genes, the coding. You can't, you can't change the coding, but you can change the expression of the gene because of the nutrients that you can intake. So if you take enough nutrients like the magnesium or zinc or B6 and B1, you can help what? Do the job of those defective genes that weren't allowing you to make energy. This then feeds other cycles, such as the one we're talking about now. We're going to talk about the liver. So the liver is there to help you with phase one and phase two detox. Everybody out there is talking about, I want to do a liver cleanse. I got to get my liver cleanse, but I've been doing a liver cleanse and it doesn't seem like it's helping my blood levels, my AST, my ALT levels, my liver enzymes are still whack. I can't ever get these things to normalize. I'm still gaining weight. I'm still getting bigger. Why? Well, there are a lot of enzymes, guys, that are in your liver. There are a lot of them. But if you study the liver and how your body will detoxify, you want to see how phase one can go into phase two. Phase one and phase two detox means that your body in phase one takes all the toxins that you've accumulated, sugars, trans fats, carbs, uh, parasites, bacteria, yeast, and your body will try to shove it into the liver because if it can't get it into the colon, it'll shove it into the liver to help the liver process it out. And eventually the toxins are stuck to this gooey, sticky substance, this fat type substance in phase one. Your body then will take a lot of nutrients such as B1, B6, B12, magnesium, zinc, antioxidants, and then can detach that toxin and transfer it over to water and attach it to water to make it water soluble. So then eventually you can pee it out through your kidneys, through your bladder. That's how the body works with the liver. Now, if your liver cannot take the fatty, sticky substances and go from phase one to phase two, what happens to it? stays in your liver. It goes back into the bloodstream. It can make you have brain fog. It can make you gain weight. It can make you have overall inflammation. It can make you have more allergies, more histamine response. It can disrupt your sleep. And in Chinese medicine, if the liver is toxic, what happens to it? It is prepared in the middle of the night. The liver does a ton of its function, helps create more bile, helps clean your blood in the middle of the night. So if you can't sleep between 11 p.m. to about 3 a.m., your liver, your gallbladder, those two brothers, sister, meridians basically are congealed with toxins and you may be trying to detoxify something. So the liver is trying its best to always go from phase one to phase two. And if we don't feed the body enough water, enough nutrients, get enough rest, if we don't, what, exercise enough, those things become stagnant in the liver and people get fatty liver or people can get those things back into the bloodstream. Cholesterol levels can get whacked because cholesterol then becomes hormones and your hormones can be affected and you don't create the hormones you need. Now, that is in a nutshell what is happening. We are going to go over the nutrients, guys, so hang on with me. When we talk about creating energy, going into liver for de detoxification, I want you to know that this liver detoxification, the energy production, will help you with most all the cycles in your body. Yes, you want to get more specific if you can't get over a hump. And when you talk about getting over a hump and you still are so frustrated, I would recommend, like the people I just said, read the work of Dr. Amy Askow, Dr. Jay Dunn, in my happy genes. I don't get any kickback guys from them. I'm just saying they have great information about there on the system of methylation and liver detox. So what we're saying is if you get a gene report or if you already have a gene report, like through 23andMe or Ancestry DNA, they give you raw data. The raw data that they give you, like coding, can be sent to certain applications. There's like LiveWello app, there's Prometheus, 
Um, there's genetic genie. That's a pretty good one. There's also my happy genes. They actually can take your genes and then look for the codes or look for the genes that are not working properly where you have the defects that help you with detoxification pathways. So if you're eating right and drinking the right amount of water and doing the right amount of juices, but you're not seeing the results you want, you may want to get a gene report to see why the toxins are stuffed up and you're not creating an energy and you're not detoxifying the liver properly. So this is a process in your genes known as methylation. And this is leading us to the next subject. Methylation in a gen general term is known as MTHFR. It's a very popular subject. You probably read about it, but MTHFR is something I have. I have, there's many MTHFR genes. They're not just one, there's many. So I have a double recessive MTHFR gene in my body. So that means that there are functions of this gene that help me with liver detoxification. And this is how it works in a nutshell, guys. The MTHFR gene codes for an enzyme to be produced to help you break down folic acid. So when I drink orange juice, I should be able to break down that folic acid properly to make it folate. You guys heard of folate. You give it to pregnant ladies so they don't have any neural tube defects in their children. It prevents spina bifida, neurological problems within the child, myelination issues like nerve strengthening. It helps the body. Folate does. But if your gene does not code for you to break down the folic acid properly, the folic acid can be very detrimental because that folate, that broken down folic acid should help you take B12, other B vitamins, and make a, pro a substance called methionine. And methionine, guys, methionine is a methyl donor turning into SAMe. Have you ever heard of SAMe? It's a very popular subject. SAM is S-adenosyl methionine. A methyl group, guys, is a carbon with three hydrogen atoms attached to it. SAMe is a carbon-hydrogen donor. It gives it away. That's what a donor does. Carbon-hydrogen methyl groups. And methyl groups attach to our enzymes, our proteins, our DNA, our cells. It attaches to so many things in our body to help protect us. It helps us run metabolic functions. It helps us with the immune system, with digestion, with detoxification rebuilding your tissue, creating cre creatinine, helps you with DNA and RNA synthesis. The list goes on and on. But if you can take that B12 to make methionine, it will make the SAMe, and this is the kicker, SAMe helps you do what? Transfers over to another cycle that helps break down histamine, reduces your, what, allergies. It also, so we help with allergies, SAMe also breaks down and helps what? VDR activity, helps your body absorb vitamin D to help you with autoimmune disease like lupus arthritis or uh, rheumatoid arthritis, helps you with osteoarthritis, helps you with bone rebuilding, helps you with cancer fighting, helps you with immune building to what? Fight off infections such as chronic Lyme disease or parasites or yeast or mold or fungus. The SAMe helps activate that into your VDR receptor. Furthermore, when the VDR receptor is turned on, it helps you with the breakdown of dopamine and serotonin, which is your happy chemicals, and your pleasure chemicals. You see how much MTHFR, breaking down folic acid to help you with absorbing vitamin B12 and other B vitamins properly, actually helps with all these cycles. And this is where the detoxification comes in even further, guys. When you have good SAMe being produced, it'll actually help your body recycle homocysteine, which can be very detrimental. It's a protein that, or an amino acid that can be very detrimental if it's in high amounts in your body because it shows for cardiovascular disease. But one of the main things it does is help you with the CBS pathway, like the television station. The CBS pathway, if, Sam, if SAMe is being produced properly, will help with this, your body to basically slow down detoxification in a healthy way. So what we wanna do is get your body to run a proper CBS pathway by producing sufficient amounts of SAMe and that will in turn, through that CBS pathway, think about it, running through that pathway will help your body produce glutathione. So you see how MTHFR has one main goal, and a few main goals, but one of the main is to produce glutathione. And glutathione is one of the major, basically, antioxidants in the body. It helps you with so many types of processes, from helping you remyelinate your nerves, helping rebuild thyroid tissue because your thyroid tissue can actually produce tons of hydrogen peroxide whenever it's producing hormones, which can be very inflammatory. Glutathione helps with that, so it keeps you from getting Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, T3, um, or hypoactive T3. It helps you with 
Your Krebs cycle helps you break down glycine to help put into your Krebs cycle to make you get more energy as well. It helps you with tons of functions in your body, guys. But when you have glutathione working properly, glutathione helps feed into that liver. It's one of your major antioxidants. It helps you start breaking down excess caffeine, excess solanines, which are from nightshade plants. You ever hear people who can't eat nightshades? They're like, oh man, I get inflamed. Why? Because there's a specific gene that helps you with breaking down the solanine. It also helps you break down heavy metals, prescription drugs, any old anesthesia, any types of drugs they put in you through surgery, anything that they put into your body or that could be locked into the liver, the glutathione helps you release, reduce, eliminate. So if you actually have toxins as well from being bit from a tick, like Lyme disease, if you have parasites running around and they're producing tons of their toxins, such as uh, acetic acid, formaldehydes, acetaldehyde, yeast produces a lot of that, ethanol. Infections create ethanol. If you drink too much alcohol, that's an aldehyde, A-L-D-H. There is a gene that helps you code to help you break down alcohol. But it also means that the liver has to be healthy. So if you cannot get proper nutrients to the liver and your genes start to wear out, you will not help that CBS pathway to help with glutathione production. And you need it to break down all of these things I just mentioned. So if you find that you have the toxic feelings in your body, you feel like you can't move forward, a gene report's not a bad thing to do. So if you guys are out there and hearing me on this, some of the main genes that I would suggest that you look into are for your Krebs cycle, the ACAT gene, the Indufus, N-D-U-F-S, and you can also find out that there are a few more that help with energy production that have to, have to do with your vitamin D, like the VDR, vitamin D receptor. And you can look into these types of genes to help you with energy production. But with the reports that you can get from some of these good types of um, apps, you'll get an explanation of what the genes do. The other ones that I would suggest for detoxification of like different things like the metals and the toxins and even your own hormones like estrogens or progesterone or testosterone, look into the genes such as the COMT, look into the CBS pathway, look into VDR again, look into MTHFR, MTR, MTRR. You can find that these genes will give you a good explanation of why you're not being able to break down toxins, why you're not able to get some of the things out of your body and move forward with your metabolism and live a healthier life. This is going to go into this one section, guys, where what then do I do? You can get a gene test. If you don't go get a gene test, then I suggest to you that you look into the top eight nutrients that most everybody in the world is deficient in. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. But I want you to know that there is research out there that suggests that individuals who do not take some of these daily nutrients may have a hard time processing toxins and moving forward because why? We all are genetic different. We're genetic variant. We all have unique needs. Yes, of course. But if we don't have a good supply of nutrients and vitamins daily, then those old gene expressions, those defective gene re expressions, the variants can express themselves as we get older, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, effects from any type of infections, such as Lyme or SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You could have metabolic syndrome. You could have brain fog or dementia, Alzheimer's, all are processes that are directly affected to MTHFR and those genes that help your liver detoxify. So what are the top eight? Well, I hope I can remember them, guys, but I see them all the time at the office. A multivitamin, a good multivitamin that doesn't have copper or iron. And you also want to look into probiotic, but a probiotic, I want you to know, it's kind of tricky. You don't always want to need a multi-probiotic. You may need to do a viome test, V-I-O-M-E, that tests your biome. So viome with the V, that can actually test which bacteria you may need in your small intestine. Find out the specific strand for you. You also want to look into vitamin D. And most people are about 2,500 international units deficient a day. They say even children, babies are 400 international units deficient every day. Vitamin K that helps proper uh, arterial health, helps you absorb vitamin D. That's the next one. So we have vitamin D, vitamin K, the multivitamin, probiotics. You have magnesium. Most people say that magnesium malate. Some people say magnesium tartrate are the most absorbable form, but if you guys can find a good holistic healthcare practitioner out there and find out what you can absorb by doing certain testing, even like nutrient testing, like through Genova Labs, I don't get any kickback. It's just, and it labs can test your nutrients for you. So we have magnesium. We also have CoQ10. CoQ10 is huge for heart health and the electron transport system. A daily dose, they say, especially if you're over 50, you need to be taking CoQ10 to help your body, what, be electrical, especially the heart, because the heart is running off blood flow and electricity. The whole body is basically. 
Then we're talking about iodine. They're saying reports that we don't get enough sea vegetables, we don't get enough seaweed in our body. And you can actually take, they say, find a good iodine that doesn't make you break out in a rash, that doesn't give you any head fog, that doesn't affect your thyroid. And people say, well, I shouldn't take, some people say I shouldn't take iodine if I have thyroid or hypothyroid. It's because you probably don't have enough selenium in your body. That's why a good multivitamin with selenium will help you metabolize iodine better. Some reports say only one a week is good. One iodine capsule, or you follow the recommendation on a bottle, you may have a couple of drops of a liquid iodine. Find the one that works for you. So you have all these nutrients working together. They try to feed the body the nutrition that would actually what? Run all the metabolic processes that help you with running the Krebs cycle, the energy cycle, and detoxifying the liver through phase one and phase two. Now, I find that carnitine also works. Carnitine is also a good nutrient that helps pull good fatty acids and good sugars into the Krebs cycle. So carnitine is also good. Mushrooms, reishi mushrooms, shiitake, um, lion's mane, different turkey tail, certain types of mushrooms that have a good combo are also used to bring energy into the cell cycle. They've shown that through research. So I love good herbal, I mean, good mushroom combinations. So we see that many times individuals may need electromagnesium or molybdenum. You have to have somebody that can test you with it. But when you find the right combinations to help you bring more ATP, more fuel to the body, help you, your liver detoxify, make more glutathione through healing the MTHFR, you're more prone to what? Get healthier, faster, better, and get over that hump. So with MTHFR, I find that certain individuals need different types of B vitamins at time, like B1 or B2 or B6, B12. It is specific to you, but don't give up. Keep going, guys. When you hear this, you're going to get overwhelmed. But remember, just those top eight I talked to you about, find and research one that helps you. And this is the kicker out of everything I told you. Find the ones that help you rest well, the vitamins and minerals, have a good night's rest, the ones that help you go to the restroom, have great bowel movements, and the ones that give you prolonged energy. If you can find those that help you get over that hump in the middle of the day where you actually have sustained energy, you found the right nutrient for you. You can start slow. Find a nutrient or find the supplement and you can just start taking them individually at first and then combining them later because you can find out how each one affects you. It may take you a few weeks, but this is the way to help you increase energy and to detoxify properly. And you can actually help with what? Healing the expression of MTHFR. I've seen it in my office. I've seen people do it all the time. I did it myself, guys, because I have a certain regimen of things I take. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K. I take an ATP fuel. Uh, supplement that helps me with my ATP production. I take um, a rosemary and I take uh, papaya enzymes. I take a few things that help bring all of my cycles together and I can treat and run all day and go for a long time and I'm thankful for it. But I'll tell you this, it helps me rest even better. It heals my body. So let's look into this pathway. If you don't have, if you have that hump and you can't get over it, guys, remember these are the top eight nutrients. You want to get a gene test if you can't get over the hump, but Look into it. See what your di daily diet, or what's your daily supplement regimen? Does it include these top eight? So I hope this helps, guys. I hope this was an inform informative uh, podcast about how your gut can affect how you store toxins and your toxicity levels can rise if you don't have the proper nutrients to help you detoxify, but you have to raise your energy in the meantime, all at the same time. But you can start slowly and efficiently with these top eight nutrients. Guys, send me some questions. Let me know if you have any messages. I know this was a long podcast. I know that probably you're getting a little, uh, maybe overwhelmed with information, but man, I love it. I love doing this in the office all day, every day. So if you have any questions, shoot me some questions and I'll try to answer them as efficiently as I can. Doc at drmotley.com. I hope you guys have a great day and that you uh, keep safe. Be well, everybody. Take it easy. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.